Hail, hail, and welcome to Paradise Report number 8. With another European campaign just days away, Saturday saw us finish up our pre-season friendly campaign at home to some familiar opponents. No, not the deceased club that used to live across the city, but the team we faced on that glorious day in Lisbon. What more fitting a way to celebrate our 125th season of unbroken existence there was a chance to reminisce about the best of those years. Nothing so grandiose this time of course, but with a Champions League qualifier for us and a Europa League qualifier for Inter, this was the last chance to show what the two teams could do. Good afternoon from Celtic Park. It's Saturday. It's a half one kick off against Inter Milan today. And I'm sure there's going to be a few festivities as the day goes on. Including, I'm told, a penalty shootout by the legends. So I'll have uh, remember in the 1972 penalty shootout. Why well, I want to remember something we lost, I'm not sure. But, don't worry, it's a. Uh, How else is we were in a European Cup semi final? So, maybe it's not exactly something too bad, you know. Anyway, the, the team news is in. And it's a, a strong line up ahead of a Helsinki game Wednesday night, which we won last run out for them. We're going with Fraser Foster and goal, a back four of Emilio Izagiri, Charlie Mulgrew, Michael Lustig, Adam Matthews, a midfield four of Chris Commons, Joe Ledley, Victor Wanyama, a Georgia Samaras, and it's our favourite front two of Gary Hooper and Anthony Stokes. Six substitutes on the bench today, it's Lucas Saluska, Jackson Irvin, Mo Bangura, Dal McGeeh, Paddy McCourt, and Philip Twardzik. So it's a pretty strong bench as well, with a couple of boys on it, maybe see what they can do. Still got Tony Watt, I'm assuming he's went over to Cliftonville, where well, there's another development squad game going on today. It'll be good to give him another 90 minutes running against a decent opposition, at least. Not exactly today's opposition of Inter Milan, but... Maybe another step up for Airdrie United at least. I know I'm just busting Chris's chops here about this one. He's a bit of a Cliftonville fan himself, so. I'm sure that'll be a good game for the Dalton squad today, whatever. Uh, we've got some crazy weather here. Ten minutes ago it was bright sunshine, five minutes ago the rains were falling down onto the beautiful Celtic Park pitch, and now it's bright sunshine again. But there's a few clouds hanging over, a bit of a wind. Flags are fluttering, including both tricolours, Irish and Italian. No league flag still. But, uh, we'll resolve that one next week. Because the SPL kicks off next weekend, can't you, mate? But else is been a flag day, looking forward to that. But for now, friendly against Santa Milan, one last run out. Let's hope we can at least put in a decent performance. I'm not expecting to win this today. Doesn't matter if we do or not. Just a decent performance to prove that we're, we're going to Europe midweek with a bit of confidence. I'm not sure, but I think the, the referee today might be Willie Collum, so that's this game ruined. It looks like him warming up in it. I'm not sure it may be Ian Brines next to him. I don't think it is, but... See that same kind of look about him. Ugh, what else what you say, baby? They're all rotten. Right, we're well, getting a few uh, the legends out now. The 67 winners with the cup, the 72 players, and some of the McBride family as well. <laughs> Funny, you never see Rangers do that. Oh, yeah, it's because they never won it, eh? They're a big shiny cup. Only team in Scotland they can chew that off. Beautiful. Sam Gamble.
We'll uh, we'll have a chat with one or two of the uh, the guys in order or two, but uh, take a look at the screens now and uh, let's have a look at a something great, Joe McBride. Thanks very much for the moment, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jim Gray. 
Coutinho, Schneider, Guarin, Cambiasso, Mojito, Ranokia, Kivu, and Jonathan, I'm assuming that's the Santos. That's some team. This is going to be a big challenge of the. That is what I call him as an FD. Didn't see uh, Ian Brown, which is not a good thing. Well, I call him, we'll be bad enough. Neil Lennon's assistant manager today with the proceeds going to the Apparently we've had a, a, a bid, not a charity bid to be the assistant manager for Neil Lennon. And, uh, and our last big surprise for the Celtic Congratulations to her. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you Nothing was not bad, pretty bare at the top though. 67, but certainly, back in the fans, and unsurprisingly, there's a bit of 20 under one fans. The best. This is a big green brigade presence today, unless they're not in their usual section. Surprised by that. 56 full of Clarkson, 46 still in McGill, 20 Paddy Wood. Right, sing Barry. Here come the teams now. Players all up past the European Cup, aren't it? The pressure, boys, but that team's starting behind you, wasn't that? Still all proud of you winning the SPL trophy, mind you. That was nothing class. That's the last bit of lines. There's a few of the other boys have won it, just recently. Two years ago, isn't it? Oh, no! uh, all the, uh, the former players are standing in the centre circle at the moment. The coin toss is getting done. I'm assuming we're going to have a minute of applause, maybe, for Joe. Victor Wanyama appears to be our captain today. We're still playing past the armband with Angels now. Yeah! 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 We will now have one minute of applause in memory of Celtics, Joe McBride. 
So Celtic Falls are going in the centre for going out. Best in peace, Joe. Put your hands together for Joe McBride's family. Oh, we'll get the, the ledges off and we'll get this game going. It's Stokes and Hooper to kick off. Let's get cracking. The Green Brigade appear to have been hiding because it's just a sudden flow of fans heading over to the Green Brigade that area and <laughs> they're singing up. Very strange. I'm not. I'm sure they were trying to prove some point, but they're all just sort of flowing that way now, up here. Oh, this is a spare green brigade. Oh, Mulgrew goes close. My header, just wide, that corner. It's just this weird flow of you towards the corner. Oh, I wish we'd get some atmosphere in here today. Anyway, there's a game mode. Let's try watching that. <laughs> so they started to put together a couple of nice moves already. Nice one there for Sammy running down. Holding off his defenders, waiting until Azagiri got in a bit of space, played him in, ball across his well cut out. The super was waiting, so it's a corner that's held it now. Coleman's with it. Rips it into the back, oh, and Yama is, he flicks it on. Charlie Mulgrew's got it on, oh, Jerry Bokes now. Was it Stokes? Stokes back to Mulgrew. So, one, quick one to the Mulgrew between him and Stokes, but it's well cut out by Camby Asso. And then I can get it clear. That was a crying ball over the top into Stokes. He ran onto it, he sliced it wide, didn't matter anyway, that side flag was up. No convinced it was. But, creating some nice stuff at the moment. Definitely a bit more promising. Getting a wee bit better every pre season game, that's all that pre season matters. Keep it up, we'll be ready for Wednesday, that's what we need to see. Well, decent chance for Celtic, so our ass was filled because he was at the corner of the box, so Chris Commons is over a free kick now. Perhaps it into the back post, but it's well cleared it to Ledley, who tries to take it first time, and that's it straight on there. <laughs> so our has got a chance, and filled in. Nah. Didn't know what happened to me, sorry. Oh, Celtic, fuck Celtic still have it though. Rupert, Mulgrew, out to Ledley. Ledley! Had to put it across oh. the box and uh, cut it back off in a corner. <laughs> Collins, the corner on it. In the centre for it's Wanyama, slice the header, Stokes! Oh, oh that's a good save for the keeper! Wanyama's header didn't quite happen properly, but it's so much so it didn't even go out and drop for Stokes. For a narrow angle, test it the goalkeeper. On target, so. Always difficult to sneak it in for that angle, but. Made the keeper make a save. This is a corner on the other side now. Commons again. <laughs> deep this one. Whenever he does that, it's wide. Probably too deep. 
That's probably one of the, the few balls as again he's worked in properly this time. Teasing ball, but neither striker had any confidence in it and didn't go for it. So the keeper managed to claw it away and the defender poked it behind for another corner. As Commons plays in now and wish they can get over it properly. He had a free header, but he was underneath it and headed over a ball. Still, that's almost half an hour. It's Celtic. It's been mainly us. We're hunting well in packs. We're getting one the possession back. The passing's better. The creativity's a bit better. Still no quite up to speed, but at this stage of the season, I think we're just about where we should be. And they're clearly not up for it yet. But you can see their qualities. It's their, their, their match sharpness that they're lacking at the moment. But that's the way pre-season worked. And just as things were starting to look good, a collision between Stokes and Canby Asso has resulted in the stretcher being called for Stokes. And Canby Asso himself got a sore one, but also at Stokes he's getting the worse. He's no walking off. He's getting stretchered off. That's a huge blow. I really want to come for the HGK Helsinki game. And if he can't walk in that ankle. Well, we only have to think of Amelia Ozegiri to know how long an ankle knock can keep you out. The Stokes has indeed gone off on that stretch up, not taking any risk. And also, Mo Bangura is getting stripped and ready to come on. Hopefully this is precautionary and nothing more, but you don't use it. It's rare you get a precautionary stretcher off. That is indeed Mo Bangura coming on. So we're ready to go again. Oh, what a beautiful goal for Chris Collins, that was! Charlie Mulgrew went and amazing run, got a free kick. Um, the free kick was taken uh, to Chris Collins just outside the other corner of the box to the surprise of just about everybody. The one touch to control up and one to bend it bend that into the far away corner. What a beauty of a goal. That's what you want to see. Chris Collins getting off the of mark straight away that season. Wouldn't have been nice if we see them with the Chris Collins of old and he's back in the score sheet like he was. 2010, 2011, as opposed to 2011 and 2012 when he only scored against Rangers. <laughs> Still funny though, isn't it? Nice to score some of them, mind you, that was beautiful. The lesson here is, huddles don't really want when the crowd's half empty. <laughs> There's that tune that'll always remind me of the 6 0 game at Come on, that's as we did it after every goal. <laughs> no time added on at the end of the first half, despite several bits of treatment, including the series one in Stokes, eh? but it's a friendly, who cares? Nobody played very friendly, mind you. A few meaty challenges going. The players are well up for it. It's good to see for your team at least. And uh, Joe the crown in the first half. Chrissy Commons finish. Keep us stood, no chance. Uh, time for some half-time entertainment. We seem to be parading supporters that were uh, in Lisbon. At the moment. Um, Everybody's a bit confused as to what's happening with Roxa. Someone will look a bit young to be wandering in there for a game that took place, what, 45 years ago? Someone will bounce, mind you. We're uh, going to get our whistle penalty shootout on the way, and uh, they're not going to go as long as they're going to go around and get something. Here we go. Welcome to the, uh, the guys from that light 
1972 players here on out there in a, the new Celtic cap. Good the Black Sox. So Ashford's in goals. Dixie's taking a penalty. Surely if we're going to recreate 1972, he needs to play this over the bar. Somehow I think he's going to score the next one. Peter, he's uh, saved penalties against uh, Boa Vista, Portugal, and uh, he's also saved against Rangers, so this afternoon against Liverpool, Dixie, and Patrick Lusty. And be Jim Craig is, of course, the man that gave away the penalty uh, in uh, Lisbon. As he was in that uh, eventful evening, uh, it's Dixie Deeds, give him a bit of encouragement. Right, Dixie. Yeah. Put this one away this time. Under the bar, that's good, Dixie! Follow it then. 1972-2012. Here's your chance to put things right, Dixie. <laughs> and there's only slow pressure. Right. Dixie's ready. Yeah, you're best, though. It runs up. And Lashford saves! At least he kept under the bar this time. He <laughs> claimed a save, he's did a mess. Nice stop, Jim Craig. Jim Craig runs up. Oh, he sends a kill the wrong way. Great penalty right in the corner. Just a bit of the veterans who are uh, making their way around the track side at the moment. Give them a nice hand as they come round. And uh, next up, uh, once again, we'll be speaking to this guy earlier today, Patrick Kluski. Give him a nice big hand. Patrick Kluski up next. Another of the Celtic players I've actually met when I met at a convention. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready, Patrick. I was sitting next to him, Dixie and Joe on a plane once. Yeah. He scores. Nice one, got a horn here. Can they keep it up? This is, um, this is Kevin Sherman. Kevin, a nice big hand. He's a competition winner. Competition winner on that. He's up in place of Jinky. And Bobby Wardock, actually. Let's hear it for Kevin. 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 Let's Kevin's going to have Just a little four little bit of a 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 can Dixie put this one away? He runs up. And sends Lash the wrong way. Dixie finally scores that penalty. It's only taken him 40 years. <laughs> ah, it's all good, Jess. Dixie's a great goal scorer at this time. Still only man to score that tricks in both the League Cup and Scottish Cup finals in the same season. Henrik nearly managed that. Not oh, quite. Just two of the Scottish Cup for Henrik. Anyway, they're going to get a four each taking and stuff. There's a Forsters back out to warm up. I think I've never sent a couple of players out to warm up as well. A couple of changes, no doubt. Oh, 
that was fun. Right, so I got back out. No further changes for the looks of it. That is just the one change with my gear off Stokes, obviously. Still waiting on the line. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the Peter McGarrow in for a foy. At least it will be a foster if I get shot in the gold booth. No, I get a team four. That's an odd thing to do at half time. Must have forgot to do it the first off. Which means Stokes is missing from it. And here come the other one team now. Just want to see if they've made any subs. Oh, it's hard to tell. I, mean, I never noticed Norwich changed their entire team in the second half on Tuesday night. So. Well, I see, I actually think that it's going to be a substitute. That's what I might do, they're number 55 hanging about. He's on for the other one. No doubt what she wrote us. So I didn't have number one players, I know. The heat was still on, Cabby Ash was still on, Zanetti's still on. So, second half ready to get underway in the line. What a have to go. Mark up, couple of chances for Celtic there. Chris Commons with a long range effort. He's looking like he's got his confidence back. Uh, and also, Samaras just set up a, a half chance for Bangura. I think the defender managed to whip it away before Bangura could knock it into the net. But looking good in that wing, Sammy again. And I'm just made a sub now. Imagine they'll be so waiting a few subs actually, they're waiting at all. That's two and three they're waiting. The they're waiting for the first one at half time. I'm not surprised, I mean, this is earlier than the pre season it is for us. This is the last pre season game before it kicks off properly. So. There's also number 16, Budiki. Yeah, a few more subs for Inter. Does he just look to freshen things up, get people some game time? There's a few of the other players on the two half we really call them, and I can't even figure out why, but they're arguing them quite a bit. Good, Sammy, yeah! There's a corner there, Sammy just get clear. That's where the roar is. No idea what happened. I mean, there was a few of them at the other end of the park, gathered around, while they call them, and were arguing something, and while I call them just to help me shut up. But it's carried on all the way up the park, so you had to tell Schneider after. And Schneider walked away laughing at him. To be fair, I'd laugh at Molly Coleman, huh? Eh? And that's possibly the best part of football we've seen for Inter Milan. One touch passing, eventually get Schneider into a position where he had a decent on target shot without any power, and Foster was able to touch it around for another corner to Inter. And Inter just starting to twist a wee bit here and hitting this way extra men down the wing. Just giving us a wee bit of baller. Corner kind of flashed through the box here, so I think they'll still have it, but they're outside the box again. Long range dusty shot, well wide. And that's the end of the danger. But I think they're just starting to come into this a bit more now and create a few chances. Okay, sub time again, 65 and o'clock. We appear to have Twardzik and McCourt ready to come on and going off. Lustig. Substitution for Celtic off is 53, Michael Lustig, and uh, number 36, Jackson Irvin, coming on. Ah, Jackson Irvin's also coming on. I'm assuming he's got it to play at the back. Nice. So a nice wee half hour for uh, well, 25 minutes for Jackson Irvin. Also coming off. Show Ledley and looks like Gary Hooper's coming off as well. Good move, I think. We stoked you off, Angel. And he came Hooper. So that's McCourt on, Thursday on, Jackson, Irvin on, and Mulgrew 
sorry, no, not Mulgrew, Lustig, uh, Hooper and Joe Ledley off. Another sub for Celtic, Dalman gave credit, come on, Samarash. He seems to have run his the ground, he's got off. Not bad for a second game back then. 73 minutes in the clock. Samarash has been struggling the last five, ten minutes, so that's a good shout. Protect them, get them ready for Wednesday night, hopefully. Jackson Irvin just would keep you up to get away from Animal Land, man. Asian confidence. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, sub for that one. Uh, Substitution for Animal Land. Schneider is going off. Schneider. I've never quite heard who's coming on, but. Bit disruptive this second half of the subs. Again, expect that in a pre season game. Quarter and left. Chris Coleman is the latest one, we're getting a bit of treatment. He slipped as he was chasing after a ball because it started raining again. And then um, he must have landed out or something because he's not too happy with something to get a bit of treatment. Hopefully that's nothing bad. And that physio is just signaling that Chris Coleman is uh, finished for the day. Again, hope that's a precaution and nothing serious. Because if it is, that's two players today that have uh, went off injured. And one of them being the goal scorer and another being a striker. That's not what we need before a European tie. And I think we've used our outfield subs, so I think we're just going to finish this game with 10 men. The home is not too bad for Commons, he's hobbling in the pitch at the moment. I hope this is one of these ones you just going to walk off. It'll be so for a couple of days, you stay off, and then, uh, there's no point putting them back on. But just make sure. Paul went in the tunnel now, so aye, uh, he's staying off. Yeah, Long range effort for Antler. Fraser Forster has to pull off a good save. Yeah. Antler's just hemming us in now because we're doing it to 10 men and we're not making a run out. It was on point Charlie oh, Mulgrew, took it all the way up to just about the halfway line and played a ball up the line and he was still named about chasing after it. There's an inner header, the corner just wide. Yay! That was close. There's five minutes left yet. As you know for the Norwich game, there's no over to the final whistle. It doesn't actually matter what the result is today, of course. But we've seen enough of the performance today to know that we're pretty much as ready as we're going to be for Europe. But a wee confidence boost in one would be just nice to take into that game. Oh, and there we go, with two minutes left, and I finally get the ball in it, because we were sweating. Go you shit, you useless bastard, sit back! Fraser Foster even saved an issue shot, and we still slept, so they put the ball back in, and it was an easy tap in. Not seeing games out. If there's one thing we haven't done today to see the game out. It was one about 60 seconds ago. We had the ball and Paddy McCock played a terrible ball up the field when we should just have kept the ball. That's something else you need to practice for Europe. Keeping the ball and seeing out the clock. That's two games this week we've conceded a late goal. Now if we can see the late goal on Wednesday, that's an away goal. That's no very good position to be taking the result into Helsinki. Even assuming We've scored a couple ourselves. We do not want to concede anything in midweek. Ah, full time, one each. Disappointing not to get a win. But, seeing enough of the day, we reasonably confident going into Wednesday. We just need to remember to see out matches. Anyway, that's us until Wednesday now. Yeah, well. So there you are, a good way to finish off pre-season, almost. Worth noting that the game has actually entered eight pre-season match, so having played so well against them, hopefully that's us ready for the challenges that await against Helsinki. 
That of course is up next, and while Cormans and Stokes are both doubts with twisting ankles, it's still better than initially feared, and they'll earn every chance of starting and taking the cover in time. One announcement to make, the Celtic Grave Society have announced their plans for a series of events across their 125th anniversary. There's about one a month until the end of the year, so for full details go to www.celticgraves.com. Although as I'm recording this, I'm having a few domain name issues, so you might be better following them on Twitter, that's at Celtic Graves. If you're looking to contribute to Celtic Grave Society, you can join up as a member for a £10 annual fee, and all the money goes into organising the wonderful things you guys do there. If you're looking for any other announcements yourself, the show's on Twitter at HHM Paradise REP. Just send me a message. No email address yet, unfortunately, I'm still sorting that one out. Hell Hell Media continues to ramp up to the new season, of course. I'll be back later this week with the first of two competitive matches, although I'll probably combine the two games into one podcast at the end of this week, which should give you enough time to catch up with other podcasts and shows on here. So with that done, all that's left for me to say is good luck to the boys against Helsinki and Aberdeen this week. This has been part of the support. Yeah, well, we'll talk to you all soon. Change. And we're gonna keep the faith that we'll do it in the new way.